What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to our Brentford preview here on Anfield Agenda. Ernest Lock gets his first competitive game as Liverpool manager and hopefully he's going to get off to winning ways and turn Anfield into the fortress we all want it to become. So if you haven't joined us for a preview before, this is what I'm going to do over the next few minutes. Go through giving you guys my score prediction, start an 11 prediction and of course, as always, asking you guys to let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now, this is my day off, so there'll be no live stream tonight. But we will be back tomorrow at half past three to start our watch along of the game. Full match coverage, as you can expect on the channel. Match reaction, player ratings videos, everything else on a match day. But before I get stuck into my predictions, we have to pay the bill. So a little word from our sponsor, Surfshark. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, the best VPN on the market. Surfshark is an app or browser extension that allows you to change your location to access websites in other countries and keep you safe and secure from hackers. Using Surfshark, we here in Ireland can access other countries' Netflix libraries or other streaming platforms like The Zone in Spain for all those important Premier League games. Surfshark keeps you safe and private by protecting everything you do online. Everything. When your device connects to the internet, all that information is, in a way, blurred out. Surfshark is particularly useful for keeping you safe from being hacked if you use public Wi-Fi. Let's say you're in a cafe, you're at college, you're out and about, they've got you covered. Surfshark allows you to use one subscription on unlimited devices, meaning you can share your account with friends or family or that neighbour who's a little bit cheap. On top of all of this, Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can also upgrade to Surfshark 1, which includes the VPN, an alert system for breaches related to your data, such as emails and credit cards, and an antivirus software for your desktop. Our sign-up offer gives you Surfshark VPN for a little over €2 Euro a month. Simply scan the QR code on screen right now, or use the link in the description and enter the code Anfield Agenda at checkout. Thank you very much for your patience, my friends. And now let's get stuck into the preview. So let's start off, as we always do, with the score prediction. Now, we're at home. I've been a little bit ballsy here. I have gone for a thorough victory for the Reds. But by what score? Let me have a look. Three goals to nil. That's what I'm predicting, ladies and gentlemen. Three goals to nil. Now, I don't mean this in any way disrespectfully towards Brentford and Thomas Frank because we know this is going to be a physical, difficult game. But I'm buoyed by that second-half performance against Ipswich in the opening day of the season. So, I'm going to carry on the good vibes into this one. Three nil, two nil, two one, one nil. It doesn't really matter as long as we get to three points. But it would be nice to open up Arne Slot's reign as Liverpool coach at home with a convincing victory. So that's my score prediction. But now we're going to go in, like we always do, to the starting 11 predictions. I don't think you're going to get any real surprises here with the goalkeeper and the centre-back selection. As you can see, I've gone for Alison Becker in goal and Ibrahim Akanade to come in alongside our captain, Virgil van Dijk. This pretty much picked itself because, of course, we did get the news that Jarrell Kwanzaa is a doubt for the game. I say doubt because he hasn't been ruled out. He did miss training on Wednesday. Arne Slot was hopeful that he would train before the game and he may well be included in the match day squad. But I think based off what we've seen at the end of the game against Ipswich, we'll probably see Ibu come in alongside Virgil for this one. So then we move into the fullback positions and again, I don't think you're going to see many surprises here. So I have gone for Trent, Alexander-Arnold and Andy Robertson. We still don't know what the future is going to be with Costas, but Robbo is the first choice left back. Yes, he did have a shortened summer, but he was chosen last week and he is the man in that position. Same with Trent on the right. So as I mentioned, not really too many surprises there. But as we move through the team, maybe you'll continue to agree with me. Maybe you'll disagree. But as always, I do want to know your thoughts. So make sure to write it in the comments section. Right, into the midfield area now. This is what I've gone for. I think we're going to see Ryan Gravenberg continue to be deployed in the number six role. I don't think Arne Slot particularly fancies the idea of Watoro Endo in this system. So until we bring in a signing, if indeed we do, you can expect to see Ryan Gravenberg continue there. 
And again, ahead of him, no real surprises, Alexis McAllister and Dominic Soboslai. Both of them, I think that is probably our strongest midfield as we see here now. Now, of course, we still await to hear about Stefan Bajcetic and his proposed loan move over to Celta Vigo and a couple of other players who could leave before the window slam shut. But I don't expect any of the first teamers to be going anywhere. So for me, this is the midfield we're going to see. Dominic Soboslai and Alexis McAllister just ahead of Ryan Gravenberg. Maybe you think differently. Maybe you think Curtis Jones or Harvey Elliott deserves a start. I'm not against it, particularly with Harvey Elliott, but this is the 11 I expect to take to the pitch against uh, Brentford on Sunday. So, next up, we go into the wide areas, and here again, there has been one little change for me. Just because I'd like to see Gakpo given the opportunity on the left. Look, Diaz had a good game against Ipswich, but I think we'll all agree, should have found himself on the score sheet. Uh, a very, very, very poor miss from close range and a couple of other long distance efforts. So, for me, there's still an opportunity for somebody to lay down a marker and make that position their own. That's why I've gone for Cody Gakpo uh, on the left and, of course, the great man himself, Mohamed Salah, on the right. Can he continue his goal scoring and assisting form? I think so. To the centre then, that remains to be seen. Who have I gone with here? Am I going to go with the tried and tested Diogo Jota over the course of pre-season and of course in the opening game? Or will I shake it up and bring in Mr. Darwin Nunes? Let's have a look. As you can see, I do expect Diogo Jota to keep his place and start ahead of Darwin Nunes, who I believe is still working his way back into, well, full fitness and Arna Slot system. So look, you may agree, you may disagree with these selections, but these are the ones I truly feel will most likely get the nod from the manager. It's going to be an interesting game. Of course, it looks like Ivan Tony probably won't be playing for Brentford. There's talk about him potentially leaving before the transfer window closes. We, of course, know all about Fabio Carvalho, who could very well come back to haunt us, and let's hope that he doesn't. I do wish Fabio all the best for his career, but, of course, we don't want him coming back to Anfield and making a statement and scoring against us, so keep your fingers crossed on that one. Other than that, it's going to be a tough physical game. We know what Brentford are about. They're going to try making a stop-start game. They're going to try to use their physicality. They're going to try to create overloads. They're going to try to use their height advantage as well, and it's up to us to just break them down and prove that over the course of 90 minutes we are the better footballing side so i've had my say now it's over to you guys to let us know what you're thinking after this well it's a small matter of a trip to take on manchester united at old trafford so you know handy one to finish up before the international break and yes you did hear me right unfortunately after the next game we will be heading into the first of three international breaks throughout september october and November, even though these guys have had shortened summers, most of them because of international tournaments. Welcome to the wonderful world of modern day football, my friends. So I'm going to leave it over to you guys now to let us know your thoughts. As we mentioned, we will be back uh, on Sunday at half past three. Well, you'll be watching this on Saturday. So tomorrow at half past three to start our watch along of the game against Brentford. Fingers crossed for two wins from two. We appreciate your time watching this video and support as always. Don't forget to drop a like and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you wonderful people on Sunday. Much love. Bye-bye.